I think BC is the the worst place to be in the world, never mind in Canada. I loved it that she's a working woman, that she's not been in politics all her life. In Canada, it's supposed to be a free country. You're supposed to be exposed to all the kind of different voices. And how come right now we're kind of like more like China? These were hardworking Canadians who were labeled as misogynist, racist, demonized, and this is what we have done with canceled culture. Drea Humphrey here with Rebel News in Abbotsford, British Columbia, because Conservative Party leadership candidate Dr. Leslyn Lewis had a sold out event here today. Approximately 300 people came to hear from why she thinks she deserves their vote to be the next leader of the Conservative Party. I'm not saying that we have a perfect country. We don't. And we've made mistakes. But we can learn from our mistakes and we can build on that. And if we erase our history, if we erase our heroes, we are doomed to make the same mistakes in the future. We have Mr. Stockwell Day here, former leader of the opposition. And tell us a little bit for anybody who's not familiar, your history with politics. Uh, well, former leader of the uh, official opposition. And then when uh, in Stephen Harper's government was uh, minister, uh, public Safety, Minister of International Trade, and then President of the Treasury Board. And so what has your role been here with Dr. Lewis's campaign? Uh, I'm a big supporter of Dr. Lewis and uh, been uh, actually uh, supporting her in her last campaign. I think she's the best candidate, brings the most to the table. So we're all working hard to see her get elected and hopefully become the next Prime Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, would you give a hand with your help for the next Prime Minister of Canada, Dr. <laughs> MP Lester Lewis. All right, this is former MP Tamara Jensen from Cloverdale, Langley City Riding. Now tell us what you've been doing on Dr. Lesson Lewis's campaign. Well, I've been having a lot of fun. It's been fantastic being able to help out. We're getting uh, different venues organized. This particular venue actually was the second one. We had a smaller venue. We got such a good response. We had to quickly come up with something new. So we came up with this place, which was awesome. Parking was tr tricky, but uh, it's been really great to see the, the amount of people that are coming out and that are really connecting with her, which is fantastic. When I ran for the leadership, it was always that debate was over. And I would say, no, any debate in a de democracy should be open. That's what a democracy is. It's a plurality of voices. And we can each have our own opinion on something and still find something that we agree to. What was the most memorable thing you heard Dr. Lewis say today? Quite frankly, I'm here with uh, more like a critical mind, okay? I saw that I said my mind to P P uh, Pierre, because I went to his, uh, his, uh, his meeting as well. And uh, for this particular meeting, I, I feel like uh, she is really family oriented. She's really in, in faith, which I am a Christian as well. And uh, initially I feel like two areas, she was a little bit soft. One is uh, the mainstream media, because it's defunct CBC, so you have to do that. Because the thing is that uh, a public funded uh, media right now become a propaganda machine. That you, she did you know. say she defunded. That's right. I did hear that at the end of it, which I'm glad to hear that. We're giving them $1 billion a year. And it's not just the CBC. A lot of legacy media is adopting this propaganda narrative and, and not really covering the news. They are opinionating, they're, they're giving their opinions on certain issues and it's always a radical left opinion. And so, yes, I would defund it. I would defund the CBC. The fact that she is outspoken about herself being Christian and pro-life, and this is the kind of politician I've been waiting for a long time, is someone who is willing to speak their beliefs without apology, basically. And I knew when I saw Andrew Scheer running from reporters because he didn't want to talk about being pro-life, I said, there's a role. And I'm going to enter politics, and I'm going to let everybody know I'm a person of faith, and I am pro-life. Yeah. 
I think what was most memorable is that she spoke about building bridges and wanting to really keep um, the community together and not speaking out against other um, about against other politicians, but really bridging everybody together and that she's open to supporting everyone, supporting big business in this country. The fabric of our nation is being torn apart. Provinces like Alberta are still threatening to leave our great confederation. Debt is piling up to the tune of $1.2 trillion. Every single day, we pay interest payments, interest payments of $140 million a day. I thought she was very believable. I was very impressed. I loved it that she's a working woman, that she's not been in politics all her life. She is the most learned person on this tour, in this race, and more so than the Prime Minister, and she doesn't brag about it, she just takes what she's learned and puts it to work. And we like that about her. What would you say to people who say, you know, I like Dr. Lewis, but it's not her time. Let, you know, Pierre get it or something like that. Well, they were in for surprise. They're they entitled to their opinion, but they're in for surprise. And I think, I mean, the venue had to be changed tonight. It was too small. And uh, every time she's speaking and the crowds are getting bigger and the more excited and people, I think people are just basically saying, wow, here's somebody who's speaking for us and not afraid to. And that's fresh air for people. Well, first of all, I got to tell you, I do love Pierre. There's no doubt about it. I was with him on the finance committee, really enjoyed working with him. Um, but I do think that uh, Lesnar comes to the table with uh, such a broad range of, of background, you know, like she's not just about finance. And I think Canadians are very clear that we're not just wallets on legs, right? So we need to make sure that we're, we're talking to them about the bigger issues that are, are concerning them. So yes, the uh, finance, uh, the economy is incredibly important, but there's so many other things to life. Family values is a big thing, you know, uh, religious freedom, freedom of speech. So I, I see that in Leslin, that she's, she's strongly able to really kind of encapsulate all of those issues. Well, I don't know very much about Pierre, but he doesn't have the values that I have, some of the social values, and Leslie Lynn Lewin does, and she's not afraid to uh, talk about it. It's very direct. I always look out for whether the politicians, like, you know, dodge their questions around, but she answers them to the boot. She adds her own flair to it, you know, and makes it unique, right? And that is what draws people in. And I'm going to do what politicians don't do. I'm going to answer your questions. <laughs> Well, you know, we were going to vote Pierre at the beginning, my husband and I, but now after listening to her, I think Pierre just um, sat back and uh, didn't speak his mind, or uh, maybe he did speak his mind, but he didn't seem to defend all Canadians. I think he uh, has a bit of an agenda as well. One of the things I've been asking people here is if they have a concern specific to British Columbia that they would like to see Dr. Lewis or the next leader of the Conservative Party to address, what do you think Dr. Lewis is able to address in that sort of area specific to British Columbia? Well, I think especially in the Chilliwack area, Abbotsford area, we've had a lot of concerns in the Fraser Valley in regards to conscience rights protection. Uh, for doctors, and we just saw the very difficult time that Delta Hospice has been going through. And we want to make sure that doctors and medical practitioners are able to um, treat their patients in accordance with their conscience. So, and I believe that she's, she's, she's able to put that forward as well. The key issues that she's touching on, they resonate here in British Columbia, but they resonate across the country. So when she's talking about that balance of the environment, wanting things to be green, but also recognizing there's a place for uh, natural gas, for instance, and uh, that's a big deal. If we can ship natural gas to China and help them get off of uh, their, you know, 2000, over 2,000 coal-burning plants, uh, issues related to agriculture, her concerns about uh, the rights of parents and the rights of families, her understanding of economic issues, that resonates in BC, but it re resonates the same way in Alberta and in Newfoundland. Uh, I think BC is the, the worst place to be in the world, never mind in Canada. So she's going to have her hands full for sure because there's so many problems that need to be corrected. Uh, I think political, I think financial accountability for some of the things I've heard from Dr. Martin with respect to artists, pharmaceuticals and the financial interest from our politicians that needs, they, there needs to be accountability 
to the Canadians and to the world on what's happening there? Well, I think our values, it, it's, it's very discouraging to see that the family is breaking down, has broken down, and that the, uh, the values, the Lord's Prayer isn't recited. And, and God sees all that. He sees it. And he's watching. He wants to bless our country. God, keep our land glorious and free. We sing that. I sing it from the bottom of my heart. And that's my prayer. But we got to listen to him. I'm here for people of faith to make them recognize that they have a right to practice their faith. And that faith is entrenched in our Constitution, in our Charter of Rights. I want to make sure that every parent in this room makes, knows that they have a right to raise their children in accordance with their values without government interference. Well, I don't like that the media always focuses on fear and it's, is so very one-sided. And I guess I'm not talking uh, to you, <laughs> about you, I should say. So I'm um, looking forward to hearing uh, news from your perspective and uh, see what you bring to the table because we're sure not getting the whole story from our normal, regular media. Ezra was the person who came out first for me, and i that's where I did my very first interview on Rebel Media. And surprisingly, like I said, courage is contagious. After that, other conservatives started to do interviews with Rebel Media. So Rebel Media has actually been uh, a friend to me. Rebel Media had the courage to feature me when um, I was not known in the conservative circles, and I credit that to um, one of the reasons why I was able to get myself out there and known and win the popular vote. So yes, I would continue speaking with Rebel Media because they're my friends. All right, now you asked a, a really good question, I thought, and basically you said that last term you did not vote Conservatives, you voted PPC, and you wanted to know what? Okay, um, so I think that uh, the vaccine is a big part. I mean, for me, that uh, uh, it's my body, my choice, and uh, I don't want anybody to actually force me to take anything that I don't deem that reason reasonably good for me. And right. And we have to find the truth only through those kind of like a. Um, um, social media was some kind of like a news like you guys, Rebel News, did uh, dare enough to speak out against them. And we have to search for it. This is not right. And this is a free country. I personally come from China. I'm a Chinese uh, immigrant from mainland China. All right. And uh, I personally experienced those kind of propaganda machine in the past. And you are overwhelmed by one voice. And you know that's wrong. But here, in Canada, supposed to be a free country. You are supposed to be exposed to all the kind of different voices. And how come right now we're kind of like more like China? So this is something that from the very beginning, I feel like I don't feel comfortable. So that's why this has become a number one so significant issues. And, and when O'Toole was the leader, and uh, when, the, when the last ele election in place, O'Toole was not clear about that. Sounds to me, he's the, the other sign of the corn. So that's why, I cannot vote for it. I know that in my district, the PPC may not have a chance, but my, I think I need to make my vote um, count. Well, I think the idea of being someone of integrity that stands for something and doesn't change, right? So stand on your firm foundation and, and, and you know, be honest and open. She's been incredibly open about, about who she is and what she stands for. And I think that's what Canadians are looking for. They're looking for someone that's actually going to be trustworthy and that's going to work um, to protect their rights. And, and that I, I feel badly for a lot of people who did feel that they had to go to the PPC because they felt that our party was not reflecting those kinds of um, uh, foundational principles. Well, the vaccine mandate, the federal vaccine mandate needs to go. You know, like there are people that are not chosen not to get vaccinated. They can't even fly and actually leave the country because they can't even cross the land border. 
Uh, so that's important, you know, like I know it's a federal issue, but it's important for people in BC. Uh, and also making sure that, you know, discrimination, you know, based on their health status, you know, would never happen again in the fall or in next year, wherever. These health policies are there to protect people. They're not based on political science. They're based on real science and make sure that people, people are protected and that we do not create a, a system of segregation based on vaccine status. Justin Trudeau enabled this national security, not national emergency act. I called John, I called his office. I debated with his associate for about 40 minutes. I said, this is not national emergency. A few truckers on the street is national emergency. Nobody is throwing any bombs on this, on this country. Where does the emergency come from? When the Emergencies Act was enacted, was utilized to confiscate people's property, to freeze bank accounts. It erodes our trust in the institution of government and we must work to restore that trust. Well, that wraps up two events that Dr. Lewis did in the Fraser Valley area. We will be going and covering more when she goes to Vancouver and also bringing you an exclusive interview for Dr. Lewis that you don't want to miss. So make sure you check for regular updates at leadershipreports.ca.